Skeeter, Buzz Skeeter, you wish for WrestleMania, The Rock can swear, but you can't swear, only he can say bad words. We also have WrestleMania injuries, a big update on Brock Lesnar, a huge debut for AEW. Good, bad news. Everything just a few weeks away from WrestleMania. I'm Kev Kell. I'm coming to you from Chicago over in Sacramento, Sac Town on the West Coast. Nick Harkson. It is Rings and Rambles. We're a few weeks out. Uh, I want to I want to prompt you, if you're watching right now, just here in the first few seconds, to hit that like button, which is completely free. You do not have a limited amount of likes. Um, no matter how much Mr. Zuckerberg or someone at a giant media company would like you to pay to give me a thumbs up. You can do them for free. And they really, really help our show out. It's free. More people see it that way, too. Uh, also, tag your wrestling friends. A really, really cool thing you can do is tag your wrestling friends. I'll jump into the comments on today's show, if you're watching any of the video channels, and keep talking to you after the show is done. So don't worry. Like, that interaction doesn't end. Your comments popping up on screen. If you like this, uh, subscribe to Sports Key to Wrestling on YouTube. Over 110,000 subscribers we just dropped some big videos on Tiffany Stratton recently. A really great one on our truth and his entire career trajectory. I know Nick, you've been ripping some shorts. You just pop some shorts in there. What, what, what shorties today have you recorded? Well, you know they got me recording a ton. We got some uh, leading up to WrestleMania. We've got some of the the five top rated stars in WWE 2K24 and the five worst rated stars in WWE 2K24. But yeah, many, a lot more there as well. All right, let's get right into it. Big news coming out of the weekend. Uh, the Rock, another big promo on Monday Night Raw. He is playing the hits. He is absolutely playing the hits uh, and did the Rock concert bit. Made fun of the town he was in, flipped it on them when they cheered for him. Uh, there uh, is this, people are enjoying the Rock. I will say this. There is there is more, many, 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 millions, millions and millions of people that are enjoying the Rock right now. And there is a growing sentiment that he's just getting too much. That you have those diehards that watch every week that he's just getting too much. There was uh, Brian Gerwitz, who is a great writer for WWE for a long time. is basically Rock's go-to writer. He wrote a lot of the Seven Bucks productions. It's clear that he's come back into the WWE fold to write with him again. Uh, having him back in WWE, I think, is a big thing. But it really just appears, from what we know on the outside looking in, that he's only working on the Rock's angles. And who else is working on them? Paul Heyman, Triple H, big yeah. names. And the, and the talent involved certainly have an influence on it, too. So this is a big angle. He's going to be involved in night one of WrestleMania. He's going to wrestle, and he's clearly going to be involved with night two uh, when Cody gets a challenge for the title. So uh, all the bloodline rules, all those different things are set up. So if you're following the stories, you know what's going on. But what's the backstage dirt? Well, that sentiment of him getting too much TV time is now cascading over. So Brian Gerwitz is saying to the fans that were saying he overran his segment on Friday night where he did a 20-minute promo on a two-hour TV show that Brian Gerwitz said, no, they were allotted this time. So you have those diehard fans to the female wrestlers that feel like they get shorter on time. Um, and we'll talk about some female wrestling injuries in WWE on today's show, which is unfortunate. But he had to throw water on that. And now there's also this growing sentiment of some people in the WWE locker room being upset with The Rock and the things he gets to do and he gets to say that they don't get to say. Uh, WWE trying to maintain PG as much as they can with Rock saying he's going to slap herpes off people's faces. Uh, but so there's some people that are upset with this here. Uh, so what do you think here? What do you think of this whole situation? Because reportedly an edict was sent out by Triple H and other members of WWE's executive branch for the talent to maintain PG on social media as much as they can. Uh, and then you have The Rock going up there and being extra dirty. And also, I love The Rock. Him cutting his own promos on his own, his socials are massive, right? And going off like this, but I'm, I'm rambling. What do you think? I love it, and I don't care what the rest of the rock locker room has to say. They can be upset. I know that they got the email. It doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, exactly. I had to do it. I had to yeah. do it. It was perfect. It was right it was there. <laughs> it was right there, Nick. I rambled for three minutes, and then I go to you for 20 seconds, and I hey. cut you off again. <laughs> it's okay, because it was perfect. It was set up. And, yeah, I mean, what do they expect out of the rock? Do they want him to say, He's going to whoop your candy butt or, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I know that what he's saying ass isn't that bad or anything, but this is the rock that we all wanted and we love. And yeah, those promos that he's cutting on his social media as well. 
that's just great for the for the business and, and i love to see it you know people i saw a comment over here that said that people need to take notes from Dwayne, and i agree i think what he's doing right now is top notch he's one of the best heels in wrestling to this day and and i'm loving it i don't care well, not everyone it can doesn't do matter what he does though you know what right. i mean I think he not everyone can like go out there and cut a promo for 20 minutes and hit all their storyline points and take pauses that that matter where the pause that's a big thing with rock and I can say this from doing comedy and improv the pauses he takes are so incredibly well done yeah what doesn't say something you're listening and like that and then because then you know it's gonna mean more so it's almost like he knows how to pull a punch verbally before he even lands it uh, Tony Soprato, I want to hear uh, Sapatero. Spatero, I can speak. Uh, Tony, yes, let's go with that. Sitting on gold, and they don't even know it. WWE has been between G and PG 13 for a while. I agree. If you, I mean, you watch, certainly you watch WWE NXT. There's a lot more, uh, I would say, younger phrasing. That show is getting a younger audience. That's what they're going for. Uh, and then with, you know, Rock's been really pushing the line here, you know, for a yeah. while, especially for network TV, they're bleeping stuff, you know? So you're doing that in front of a live crowd, but you're bleeping things on a TV show, which isn't easy to do on a live television, by the way. Live television is not easy to pull that off production-wise. Um, here we go. Jesse, I Triple H is torn between The Rock's grandmother and Bray Wyatt for the final spot in the WWE Hall of Fame class. That is widely speculated, widely uh, reported. We'll find, I think we'll find out probably more. Uh, they announced most of these on like a Tuesday for some reason. Yeah, I believe. Uh, and I think we'll find out more about that. I know a lot of people saying that Rock's grandmother, uh, Miss Maivia, will be a part of this and that she'll be a part of it. She, of course, was a big prominent wrestling promoter with Polynesian Pro Wrestling for a very, very long time. And that is where the Rock's family came up in wrestling. But a lot of people saying, oh, Bray Wyatt should go in. Well, there was some Bray Wyatt news and we'll touch on that. But let's stay on topic here. Let's stay on topic here. Um, stay there. I want to get more comments in here extremely entertaining thank you so much james i appreciate that this is a good question what do you think yes sean read this one because wwe is going to netflix next year yeah they have the same regulations on whether or not they can say naughty words yeah you know um this 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 is a great question and sean says they're getting going to netflix so maybe they're preparing to get more attitude and that's kind of what i was thinking too you know they're they're building up to it and i was kind of hoping that when they go to the new streaming service that they were going to maybe go towards the PG 13. You know, I, I know this is a kid show as well. There's a ton of children tuning in week after week, but when I was growing up, I went through the attitude era. I think I'm fine. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little crazy, but, uh, but I think it's, I think it would be great if they did add a little bit more attitude once they went to Netflix and this could be the lead into it. The rock just, They've you been know, so successful with being PG, though. You know what they I mean? Have. They've been very, very – as much as, like, guys like you and I and, and, and women as well of a certain age that are like, oh, I want it to be, like, Attitude. Everyone says, I want Attitude Era back. You don't actually want Attitude Era back. Right. You don't want you, it. Cause... You want elements of that back. <laughs> right. Not uh, the full deal. So, yeah. So, shout out to people watching in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, if you're a new viewer, tell us where you guys are watching from. I love hearing from people that are watching from somewhere for the first time. Uh, it's The Rock. Let The Rock do what he wants to do. I know it's a double standard, but it is The Rock. Uh, Ray Dean saying, in my opinion, only Cena can cut a promo as good as The Rock. It's amazing. The Rock can't do PG promos. That's another thing I've heard before. You know, when Rock came back about 10 years ago and he did the entire ramp up to WrestleMania 28, I think it was 27, like that whole, that whole three year arc they did there. Um, and that did a lot to reinvigorate The Rock's celebrity just outside of wrestling. It made yes. the wrestling fans remember who The Rock was, and he became much more of an action movie star around then. He started doing the Fast and the Furious films. That really, like, rebooted his Hollywood career. And he was doing some certainly anti-PG things, you know, like, one, they were very much in the thick of being PG, and John Cena was the def definition of that. But Rock and Cena were clearly the only guys who could really step outside of that. And but he was, you know, they were doing the fruity pebbles and stuff like that. Like they were trying to go as close to it as they could, you know. And I'll give it to Brent Gurr, it's definitely right in some of this. Uh, but you know, The Rock is a guy who has to take it off the page, and make it his own. Uh, but I certainly get the impression that he really enjoys doing things that are much more risque. But this is someone who also owns a, a chunk of the company at this point, and right. he's at the table and he and he's going to get some carbonage there. Shout out to Canada, a couple people north of the border. Oh yeah, Miami, Florida. How you doing? Miami. South Carolina on the map here. 
Uh, so let's get into this. The Bray Wyatt documentary is coming. We're going to get this in early April. This will be streaming with WWE on Peacock and WWE Network around the world. Josh was saying, did you get to see the trailer for the Bray Wyatt doc? I did. It is really emotional to see in the context of losing Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of footage from him um, for this within the context of a documentary that makes me think that maybe he was involved in some of sh shooting this. And, and then the unfortunate stuff happened with them, you know, Ooh. um, guy who's raised in wrestling. His father's a wrestler, uh, Mike Rotunda going to be in the hall of fame. I know a lot of people demanding that Bray go in this year's hall of fame. And I wonder what the sentiment is going to be around that. I hope that doesn't sour the hall of fame for everybody else who gets inducted. Cause I don't get the impression that he's going in this year. Yeah, I don't I don't really think he is either. And I think that this documentary might be, you know, something that they're giving the fans mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, like we're not going to induct him this year. But yeah, but nice here, documentary. we made this entire movie about him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think that there we talked about this on previous weeks. I still think that there might be something that we don't know to why he's not getting inducted this year, because it would be great to see him in there. But I think they would have already made the announcement if he was going to be in this year. But you never know. They could be saving it for last. And, uh... um, and also another thing, and I, I don't want to put words in people's mouths. There are some times when people get inducted in the Hall of Fame that they turn it down uh, mm -hmm. and and they say they don't want to do it. Paul Heyman, uh, obviously, is going to accept it and he's going to go in in Philadelphia where ECW became. A, it feels right. It feels yeah. right. Oh, yeah. He went on the record with TMZ and said he turned it down several times, several times. He turned down the Hall of Fame. And and now he feels like this is Triple H's WWE. This is WrestleMania 40. It's Philadelphia. You know, like I, I get where he says, all right, now's the time. Also, he said his family wanted it. So his family wants to be a part of it. And that's a part of the decision here, too. I'm right. not going to speak for someone else's family. But maybe for some other people, they're like, Mike Rotunda is going in. Like, this is a guy who was a part of WWE for decades, by the way. Mm -hmm. He was a producer and an agent. In, during some of the most successful times in the business and a performer as well yep. and wrestled on WrestleMania one. That's why he's going in sure. with Barry Windham. Windham, Barry Windham is his uncle. <laughs> so, I mean, Bray Wyatt's uncle, he's named after him. So there's a lot of familiar connection. I do think there will be a tribute of some kind to him uh, and that will be noted. And I think if, if Bray went in, why would you even care about his dad going in? Why would you even get like the same thing? So I think for the Rotunda family, for them, it's Wyndham and Mike are going in and yeah. our family will be back to have Bray go in. And I think maybe it's, I don't speak for the family, but the families do have some say in this, especially when someone has passed. Uh, and I, I can say that from talking to other people that have been a part of those inductions uh, for someone who's passed that they do have, they do get consulted about it and they agree whether or not they want to want to appear or anything like that. And there's been some times when people get inducted and they, the family does not know, or they're not like deeply involved with the process. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see here. Um, I can't wait for this documentary to come out. So people are really excited yeah. for it. Yeah. Uh, I have seen a lot of people rage on your page. All you can see from AEW superstar is former W series. We all know that. Okay. Yeah, I agree. We're always going to have people get pet. Um, yeah. And then Josh was saying, I think the dad and uncle have the dad and the uncle before. Right? <laughs> uh, well, these are guys that are also, uh, you know, you know, worthy of being in, by the way. Like, don't, definitely, don't definitely. Uh, that's the thing. Like, don't dismiss these guys. Like, don't dismiss these guys. What's, what's going on, Eastern Oklahoma? We got some boomer sooners out here. Nice. Uh, James, new to the channel. Thank you, James. Go ahead and subscribe, by the way. Yeah. What's going on, on, James? YouTube. Shout out to everyone over on Facebook, by the way, on the Wrestle Room page. Thank you so much. If you guys yeah. are with us, we do this every Monday afternoon. Uh, people saying Bo Dallas coming back to the WWE. Of course, Bo Dallas is Bray Wyatt's brother and was portraying Uncle Howdy, kind of like that alter ego character that Bray would perform as. Uh, other people saying um, that Bray Wyatt should be inducted next year. You know, that you, you want to do that. You know, So I know there's yeah. a lot of people that were upset about it, but it's clear. I don't get the impression that he's going in. No, and it's it's just so like soon too, you know. It, it just happened. It, it's you know. The thing it's is, like, the pattern was though. You did that with other people. You true. know, like when, when yeah. Eddie Guerrero passed away in 05, he was inducted that spring. You know, so um, I can understand that. And there's a desire for fans to want to do that. Yeah, you know, like there's there's. There, there, I'm I'm not saying that your your heartfelt compassion and and love for this character. Uh, that a lot of casual wrestling fans like Bray Wyatt, by the way. A lot it, yeah, of like non-hardcore fans like like him a lot. And then there's there's an intersection with it there. Uh, so let's get into this. 
we got some WrestleMania injuries to talk about here. You don't want to get injured this close to the biggest show of the year. You don't, but the road to WrestleMania still has you performing. WWE will be on that road this weekend. They will be in Springfield, Illinois, and Rockford, Illinois this weekend. Uh, I will be doing some interviews for those shows. I'll nice. be interviewing uh, someone who is challenging for a championship at WrestleMania later this week and somebody who was a part of one of the main events of last year's WrestleMania. Those interviews are going to be coming down the pike for us. I'll look out for those on our WrestleBinge channel. So while I'm talking about that, awesome. uh, we had some boo-boos. We had some serious boo-boos come up here on Friday Night SmackDown. What happened, buddy? Well, you know, uh, Asuka's banged up, and it looks like potentially Bailey might have caught a little injury there too, but we don't know for certain if she's her. But Asuka is definitely looking like she's probably – going to miss wrestlemania this year so you you saw that knee injury you saw more yes. of it I, I guess i skipped over when i was watching it i knew well, it was bad and then I, I i do that thing where i'm watching and i kind of skim through if i'm on the dvr and then yeah. after everyone's saying the injury injury i was like oh i saw something but it, i thought it was like a cell you know yeah and, I, and then when you don't see it but i did see the bailey one so with, yes. with oscar it appears like there's a knee issue uh and they don't know how severe that issue is now, Correct. it's also worth noting that a she's one half of the women's tag team champions. They have not announced a match yet for that. Right. Uh, but there was an expectation two nights of WrestleMania that they would have a spot on the card. Bailey is already set to take on EO Sky, though, for one of the women's championships. That's been in motion. Her trying to get revenge on the damage control faction with uh, Dakota Kai, EO Sky, and Kyrie Sane, and Asuka. Yes. And they do the beatdown angle. She takes a big moonsault. Really catches a lot of that on her face. Uh, concussion worries, obviously, but she really ate a lot of that move. The way the way they stretched her out, they held her down to like take it. You do the double team type thing, uh, but that looked really brutal. A lot of people taking boo boos of those moon salts and like top rope spots in the face. That over with Sam, uh, Sammy Guevara and Jeff Hardy. Recently. Yeah, that was recent too. Yeah, but th this this Bailey one was was pretty nasty, and I mean you could see it in real time. The Oscar, you know, I. I kind of think I know where it happened. I'm not really sure though, but you could see her limping around at the end and and then the reports came out and so yeah, but the Bailey one it looked pretty bad and I would hope though with a concussion sometimes you can come back a little bit quicker, but sometimes they do linger for a lot longer than you'd hope. So, I'm just hoping the best for Bailey and that she's able to perform at WrestleMania. She's going to have a broken nose. You yeah, know what I mean? Gonna, like, yeah. You, you, know, you could have a lot of different things. There. Broken orbital bone. You know, every, a, yeah. a ton of things could be happening there. But, yeah, it was nasty, to say the least. Mm -hmm. uh, other people with uh, different takes here. It's certainly interesting as well. You talk about people that just have ailments in general. Raquel Rodriguez, she's been dealing with mast cell syndrome, at just a, a health issue. She got past it to be able to perform an elimination chamber, was added kind of relatively late to that multi-woman match. There was no expectation that she would win it, but it was certainly great because we hadn't seen her in a long time. Yeah. Now that's an issue again, and it seems like that's going to cost her WrestleMania. It's also worth noting, I feel really, really bad when people miss WrestleMania because it's, it's the moneymaker. It's the biggest, oh, yeah. it's the like outside of the Saudi Arabia shows, those are the biggest money shows you can be a part of, you know? Uh, so I, I definitely feel for people involved in that. Uh, we have an update, though, as well on Brock Lesnar. Now, Brock Lesnar, part of the unfortunate investigation into WWE's now former chairman and the Walt Disney of pro wrestling, Vince McMahon. Of course, I'm not going to get into the specifics of that because it is quite depressing and a situation that isn't updated. There isn't anything relatively new outside of some uh, recent last week, some executives who were tied to the investigation that were named uh, and they were just uh, were they aware of it? That type of thing. Are they implicated? Uh, were they complicit? You know, those type of things. Now, a little update, though, for what I think wrestling fans are going to ask about is how does this affect a talent? Because the other talent that was involved in this was Brock Lesnar, who had some type of exchange with this woman over text. And was she uh, offered to him uh, is, is something that is in that conversation, which is wild and disgusting to hear in terms of an allegation. Uh, the, but, well, that is just an allegation. I'll leave it at that for legalities. Now, there is some worry about what this would mean for Brock Lesnar because he was taken off the WWE video games. He was taken off the Supercard game. Wrestling Observer reporting in the most recent episode, there was some potential thought that maybe they could have creative plans for return for him to the company at the Men's Royal Rumble. That was literally yanked out, scrapped that week yeah. with uh, the allegations dropping them. Uh, and then there was some hope. Well, maybe, maybe off the record they could find something. No. So this is the most recent report that there is. No plans or movement whatsoever for Lesnar's return, according to the Wrestling Observer. So I know that may not be what some people want, 
know, some people say that Brock Lesnar shouldn't, you know, be implicated. I've heard some people say that. Yeah. Um, but it's certainly a situation with a big name. What say you? Yeah, uh, we were asked, you know, last week, I think it was, maybe the week mm-hmm. before, if I thought that Brock Lesnar was coming back because he had appeared back up on the Yeah, we had, we had a lot of fans asking about that yeah. last week. Yeah. And I, and I said I didn't think he would be back, uh, but... At least I mean, not anytime it, soon. Anytime soon. I, I think that maybe down the road he could, but not by WrestleMania, and I think that no. this right here is definitely solidifying that. But who knows? He could he could shock the world. He could come out, but I don't think that that's in the cards at all with these statements made recently. Nope. So nope. not gonna not gonna happen. Not gonna see Brock anytime soon. Uh, let's. Uh, should we step out of WWE for a moment, or should we stay with WWE? You want to stay with WWE? Yeah. Whatever you're feeling, we can we can step outside the box. Stick with WWE. Oh, let's stick with. Uh, let's so out. WrestleMania week in Philadelphia. You already know it isn't just about WWE. If you follow the business, and if you've never been to a WrestleMania, uh, I'm going. I'm excited. Nice. Uh, and there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things that go on with wrestling outside of it. WrestleCon. Bill Apter and I will be there, which is great. Awesome. Great event. A lot of big names announced for that. I think Ultimo Dragon, Lisa Marie Varon, a lot of huge, huge names are going to be there. Ric Flair, I believe, is doing a signing as well. So you have WWE World. You have all these signings and conventions. You have the Hall of Fame, which is just tied to SmackDown. But you have a lot of high-caliber independent wrestling events going on that weekend. And one of them is presented by GCW. It is the Bloodsport event, which is essentially the movie Bloodsport in a pro wrestling uh, demonstration. No ropes on the ring. And you basically get MMA pro wrestling. You get legitimate combat that is scripted and performed and it looks really really cool it's a very very unique show it's not a show i think i would want to watch all the time but a show i would want to go and see on occasion and it feels very special you know the raw underground basically raw underground basically was trying to be blood sport on tv okay so like say whatever you want about it and a, a big part of that is mma legend former ufc main eventer uh, former pro wrestler, a student of Antonio Inoki and Inokiism, and that would be Josh Barnett. This is his creation. This is really his baby. Uh, he's brought some big names into it. There are a lot of pro wrestlers who are a fan of combat sports, like John Moxley, Matt Riddle, different guys of that re- re- regard, you know, Killer Cross, guys like that. Uh, one of his students, though, is going to be a part of this. The disciple of the war master, Josh Barnett. WWE contracted superstar Shayna Baszler making the announcement this past uh, week that she will be on the show and she did a killer promo. Hashtag live by limb. Yeah. Twitter. Yes. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, she's in a tag team with Zoe Stark. They did some stuff. I I think you got some talent in WWE that aren't going to have a major match at WrestleMania. But wow, are you in a really different WWE when yeah. you as a contracted talent are not allowed just to go do anything, maybe a movie or this. No, no, no. We're going to let you go wrestle at another show that isn't promoted by us during WrestleMania week. And on the flyers, it's saying WWE superstar. It's crazy. This is Triple H's WWE. Yep. This, is not, this is not Vince McMahon's WWE at this point. And I wonder... Like how different things are. This isn't the first time WWE's done this. They've worked with other promotions before. They worked with Evolve. They worked with ICW. They in the decades before everyone says oh, they don't work with other promotions. They don't play well with others. No, they do. They worked with Smoky Mountain. They worked with. The, they kept ECW alive. Yeah. They, outside of their own company before they bought it. Um. But this is wild because it's during WrestleMania week. What do you think of this? This is nuts. I I like it. You know, um, it is crazy, but. Aren't Josh and uh, Triple H? They're they're friends, right? They are. They uh, are friendly. So okay. I, I, I and, friendly. and uh, the fact and that that's already been reported that Josh Barnett reached out in the past to try and get people from WWE. He also took a shot at the whole Raw Underground thing. Like you're basically trying to take the whole yeah. thing and put it on TV. Uh, but that was more, I think, more of a pandemic creation than anything. Like you know, how could we get wrestlers on the ring and make it feel special? Um, so yeah, it, it's but, but it's nuts. And also, apparently, there's more people that are in WWE that are looking to potentially do something like this outside of WWE. It would be crazy. I mean, this could be the start of it. I, I know, like you said, it's happened before and it's, and it's, mm-hmm. you know, but I mean, this is, this is big with the logo and everything on there. And I, and I want to read Shayna's little tweet that she put out here real quick. Cause, cause it was amazing. She said, you people merely adopted blood sport. I was born in it. I was, bo- I was born in the blood. Sport. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> from Billy Robinson, the gene seed of the war master himself. Blood for the blood god. Yeah, ah, <laughs> <laughs> that's nuts. But yeah. But yeah, um, it's crazy, and I, but I like it. I like it. Yeah, it, it, which complicates is you got you got Big Papa Dave Meltzer, Wrestling Reserve Radio, saying that there's AEW talent they're going to be announced for this. Yeah. So you're going to have talent from All Elite Wrestling on the same show as contracted WWE talent for this. Um, it's also noted that there are some talents that are in AEW and WWE that can't do these outside shows so yeah. it isn't it's a case-by-case -case basis there's probably a lot more no's than there are yeses um but you have some you know used to be the aw would let people do a lot of this other stuff i worked on some aaw shows with all elite wrestling contracted talent we just did i did some promos recently with sky blue and an angle and we're gonna have her back for another match and you know that's way above my pay grade but when mm -hmm. i see the talent there and they're backstage they're either hanging out or i know they're gonna be involved in something you know, uh, and uh, if I'm in AAW, Berwin Eagles Club, humble little Berwin Eagles Club, and you know, somebody from WWE walks in the door, I'm like, now I got to think like, are you wrestling? <laughs> like, right? Like, are you are you good in the ring? You cut an angle? Uh, because uh, you know it was a wild in that regard. Uh, but it's 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 so different, right? Shinsuke different. Nakamura got to do that big match with Great Muda. Yep. And I thought That's that was a was really really. I thought that was a really, really big sign of what was uh, coming up. That the way talent who are in a, I don't think you know Cody is going to be allowed to do this. Obviously, you don't want to risk injury or anything like that. Right. But it's no shot at Shayna. She's not in a big match this year, you know. And Good. you want to, I think you want to keep that talent happy. You want some yeah. depth there, you know. You need depth. You need to keep them fresh. You know, keep them competing. And and uh, yeah, this is kind of rewarding them too, letting them know, hey, we we still care about you. You know, we didn't put you in a big match at WrestleMania or anything like that, but go ahead and go do this. And, you know, we're, we're going to give you the freedom because. All right, Zach Williams, yeah. you popped in late, but I don't mind doing this. Okay, you popped in. I don't mind the non-linear, hey, I missed it, what happened type thing. Yeah. I want to make you happy, especially if you're watching live. Yeah. The update on Brock Lesnar is there is no plan for him to come back currently. So there was some thought that people thought maybe they could figure out a way to get him back with all this going on. But pending in the investigation, the lawsuits and everything like that, uh, Observer, Wrestling Observer reporting, there is no current plan whatsoever for him to return, no. and he was yanked off of those plans because of the allegations and things that he's associated with, not alleged. Okay, associated with. Okay, Mercedes Monet debuts for AEW. Big crowd, big business, AEW mm -hmm. Dynamite. They do this in Boston. They sell a lot of tickets. Did did sell well, uh, was my understanding. They sold, sold very, very well for this show. Uh, and then the ratings came in. Uh, these ratings came in, and there was hope that a special a special episode of AEW Dynamite would crack a million. Well, the segment that Mercedes Monet was in that opened the show, unadvertised her debut, cracked a million. Crack. But that, sh that same show, according to WrestleNomics, went down to 647,000 average estimated viewers. Now, this is the Nielsen rating system, which I despise as somebody who works in media because I think it's a very faulted system. Uh, but it's a game you got to play. It's how you sell yeah. your rates. So, not great. Not a great number. Uh, not, a, not a good one. You can't spin that uh, in any way. And the average viewership of the show overall ended up being about 800,000 overall. The whole, where you whittle that number down. Uh, she cracked a million. She certainly got them talking on social. She'll sell more tickets. No uh, first big match announced for her. She'll be on next week's show. Obviously, going to build the entire uh, women's division around her. I just recorded a great video for Sports Keto, the essay video. We're going to break down, like, really the whole road to her getting here. What do you think here? Uh, they had her involved in the show closing segment, and she went from, you know, over a million people watching her to two hours later, close to probably half that watching. I mean, you know, it just shows the draw that she brings because, I mean, what? That was a million viewers when she was on. So I, uh, I don't want to feel like I, I it's, we're removed from it because it's Wednesday. Right. You know, it happened right. Wednesday, we're Monday. I don't, it was a big deal. I thought she had a great promo. She felt like a big star. They, the, no, the she, theme music, they made her feel like a big deal. Yeah. She's I don't want to be CEO. so. CEO. Uh, yeah. CEO. People immediately <laughs> yeah. chanting it, right? Yeah. Uh, but I don't want people to feel like, you know, I'm. I'm, I'm poo pooing on it. Poo poo. No, no, I don't think you are. I think that she had a great promo and, and came out there and she's going to be a big deal 
for AEW moving forward, the women's division. You know, it's exciting that she's there now. And I'd see her putting a title up, see them putting a title on her, you know, in the very new future, probably mm -hmm. just because of, you know, how much draw she's got. But, you know, um, yeah, it's it's kind of crazy how far the ratings dropped from where when she was on TV to when she wasn't. And uh, so I don't know, but it's it, it's going to be good having her in AEW moving forward is how I feel about it. Absolutely. Go ahead and like, share, comment, get in there. Let's hear from you. Let's crack those like buttons wherever you're watching it. Also, if you want to catch the show on demand, it's available on demand. If you're watching it on video now and you didn't watch the whole thing, go ahead and watch the whole thing. All right. Mm -hmm. You can also listen uh, to all of our shows in our Sports Keto Wrestling Audio Podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Go ahead and give us a five star review on there as well. You get the weekly shows as well from Bill After, Teddy Long, Dutch Mantel. Vince Russo, bro. He's get, he's been getting into it, Cody. Uh, and <laughs> a lot of that stuff is available right now on demand whenever you want it. Also, big interviews coming up this week as well, as I mentioned. Uh, huge names. Huge, huge names. Want to get to your questions here. There's a couple questions, and if you guys have one, if you already asked it and we didn't get to it, go ahead and put it in there. Lynn, on the topic of uh, Mercedes Monet, AEW needs to advertise this big name stars for more pop. Completely agree. Uh, the, the when you did this with Punk before, it worked. I was at the yeah. show where he came out. They sold like 18,000, 19, like uh, over 18,000 tickets. They did hundreds of thousands of dollars of merchandise sales in one night. I, when I was there, it felt like it was a wrestling convention with some wrestling shows. And the main event was CM Punk walks out and he's got a new t-shirt. Like, I know, I know that seems like belittling, but I was there. It was an event when he, when he debuted for AEW and came back to wrestling, right? Yep. Huge deal. I don't feel, and I, I'm going to get some flack here from the Mercedes Monet crowd, the Sasha Banks stands. Brace yourself, Sports Kita, Sports Kita social media team. <laughs> Grab something. Hold down. All right. <sighs> the debut of Mercedes Monet pales in comparison to that of CM Punk. And the terms of execution and where AEW was at the time as a brand. And I'm not saying that AEW is awful or they're bad. No, it's very, very healthy. There's wrestlers there doing some exciting things. But overall, they're trying to make up for losing big names to WWE, losing some traction with their audience, doing some redundant things, their women's division not feeling as prominent as what WWE is doing, and fans starting to make those comparisons because also you want to compete. So when you compete, fans make those comparisons. All right? So now you got to live up to the expectations of getting this big, big name here that comes over and brings her audience with her. That's what Mercedes Monet is going to do, and that's what they're going to try and do. I'm looking forward to it. Why you don't advertise that now when you're really in that number two spot as a wrestling company and you're, you even have Tony content. We're the challenger brand. You know what I mean? Like, we're the challenger brand. We're challenging an established brand in the marketplace. Tell me that. You know, yeah. the major thing they do is they they – have so many matches that they don't promote locally. You don't know about the matches on Dynamite sometimes until two or three days before. Now, mind you, people bought tickets to the show knowing it's in Boston. She's going to be there. Like, they know. But yeah. I'm saying week to week in general. In general. Let you it know be what known. I mean? Um, so. I agree. I agree. I know. But, but hey, I am i don't own a multi-million dollar wrestling company. <laughs> I mean, they did it with Sting, too. I mean, Sting's match was still great, but. You, but they knew we knew about that months in advance. Yeah, months in advance that it was going to be his last match, and they sold out tickets. And it was Greensboro it was awesome, right? Yeah. But also, there was much more anticipation for that pay per view too. You know, I mean, like yeah. to, to watch it anywhere in the world. What if more people watch the TV show because they know for a fact that she's going to be there? You right. know what I mean? Right. So, uh, like, like <laughs> that's that's the part. I'm like, you want casual hardcore wrestling fans are going to know they're going to talk to each other. Yeah, they'll but know. Where is the Sasha Banks fan? who will dress up like her for Halloween and loves Sasha Banks, loves Mercedes Monet. We'd seek out what she did in New Japan. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All those things. Does that fan know? You know what I mean? Does does that do do, the, do those fans know? Does you know that like the there was a bunch of pictures that went viral. There was the WrestleMania, one of the last WrestleManias she worked, where she was in a tag team with Naomi. Yeah. And I remember this going by. It was these kids who cosplayed as Naomi and Sasha Banks. And everyone I knew that was a female wrestling fan was like, look at this. This is awesome. Yeah. This yeah. is wrestling. You love seeing someone like 
like go viral with a, like a really fun like costume like that and it shows your fandom and love for it right yeah where are those fans talking about this you know i, I and i'm saying i think they're out there but you yeah. don't feel it it doesn't feel the same this doesn't no. feel as big as when she was like the new japan stuff and that was yeah. at like 4 a.m in the morning <laughs> you know what i mean true. so like uh and so and i'm not saying and i'm just saying i'm just looking at social media and different things like that She's still one of the biggest stars. She's still going to drive stuff. She's still going to sell merch, right? Yeah. Had the most watched segment probably of AEW television in a long, long time. Million viewers, right? Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. You know, and there's probably times when AEW is cracking a million stupid rating systems and stuff like that. But like I said, it's the way you play. I'm ramping too much. I'm sorry. I'm talking at you. <laughs> you want to get into some questions here? Let's get into some questions. Let's let yeah. the people ask the questions. Let's people ask the questions here. Uh, uh, well, I, here we go. I'm trying to look for a good one here. Uh, I know I had one here. I'm trying. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. 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 Here we go. Uh, let's talk about big WrestleMania main events. What do you think here? Ask this one here from Matthew Lincoln. What if Rock and Roman win, and everyone in the locker room help Cody and Seth? Well, mm. uh, you know that could. Mm. Mm. Is there going to be an, a mutiny? All those people upset they can't say naughty words on television are going to come out and cause the rough. <laughs> um, there could be something like that. Now. The Probably amount of fantasy booking that people have put on this is through the roof. So the scenario, if you don't know, is night one of WrestleMania will be The Rock and Roman Reigns taking on Cody Rhodes and World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins. If they win, the following night of WrestleMania, we'll see Cody Rhodes have to face roman reigns under bloodline rules which basically means anything happens now if cody <laughs> and rollins win the bloodline is barred from ringside they cannot appear at ringside um there's some i hear there's some people that say this is too predictable but once again predictability isn't bad you can do a lot of swerves and still have a predictable outcome um i've said it for weeks and i'll be maybe i'll be wrong tommy dreamer selling it wrong tommy dreamer was on busted open today saying that he thinks wrong yeah there's gonna be more Cody Cry babies coming out of the weekend, and he's not gonna win the title. <laughs> but I think I think uh, Philadelphia ends with Cody winning this whole thing. But uh, uh, an uprising from the locker room. What say you, bud? You know, I don't know if it's gonna be an uprising from the locker room. I think that Cody is gonna have to go against all odds. Uh, talked about that last week. My fantasy booking sucked and, and all that. But uh, but, but yeah, I, I I agree. Now you know, I think that he is gonna have the odds stacked against him. And he's going to make it happen somehow. Um, I think that, you know, a few people, maybe one or two, could come out and help him. A big return just for one night, maybe, to, you know, go against The Rock, combat him. But um, I don't think it's going to be a ton of people from the locker room. I don't think, you know, not everybody from the locker room. But I could see a couple, maybe maybe one or two. But Who do you got? Who do you got? You got the pencil? Who do, who do you got? Oh, you know, we, we could see... Some old time, I, you know, I could see John Cena. Ba, ba, da, ba. Definitely. Because uh, he, he's talking about. It's a way know, to get him on maybe, WrestleMania. Maybe getting into WrestleMania, getting involved. Some have way, him do a cameo. Perfect. You know what I mean? Have him do a cameo. Have him do all that. Yeah. You know, I, I think a few people mentioned the Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, Jey Uso could come out and get involved, help, help Cody out. You know, I don't know. There's there's a ton of possibilities. But. A ton of possibilities. But I'm excited for it. I can't wait. That's why we're all going to be here ready to watch because there is all this speculation around it. So I heard this rumbling of the footage, the hype packages that WWE is putting together for WrestleMania. There was reported a few weeks ago, hey, yo, the, the Rock, Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> called me up, Rock, you yeah. know, part of the, you know, Philadelphia, play I was Rocky Balboa. I'm doing a very bad Rocky impression. I love no, Rocky. I think it's one of the best film franchises of all time in terms of like satisfaction. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, Rocky from Philadelphia, you have to do something with this. It'd be ridiculous if you didn't. It is so wrestling. Thunderlips, Hulk Hogan, WrestleMania 3, Mr. T out of that is WrestleMania, oh, yeah. Rocky 3. Like there's just so many connections, right? And the character yeah. is so pro wrestling already. You know what I mean? So, um, there's some talk of them doing some type of like training montage hype video that like they would take off. They would spin off of the Rocky movies with Cody uh, and, and the inspiration of the American nightmare and the, within the American dream 
is what I'm reading here. So I'm like, yeah, I'm on board for this. I, I, oh, yeah. want, I want to see some of that. I can enjoy that. Questions here. Uh, Mercedes Monet in AEW. Who do you want to see her face first? Her and Tony Storm, Tiny, Timeless Tony Storm. It's going to be really, really entertaining. Uh, yeah. Timeless Tony Storm is probably one of the top top working characters in wrestling right now in terms of a character you know yeah. it, like she's coming out there calling doing the most ridiculous stuff like she is the most sports entertainment thing in AEW. uh but i think she's due to have some more serious matches you know and, and remind you that she can still go bell to bell while not playing a hollywood starlet from the 1920s um 30s 40s whatever uh so i, I think that would be fun but i, I want to hold that off i don't want to do that right away uh, they already had her get into it, uh, saving Willow Nightingale and uh, rubbing elbows. There was Sky Sky Blue and Julia Hart at the end of Dynamite. So I think that's a direction right away. But what a rub there for Sky Blue and Julia Hart. Yeah, uh, and for them to be able to work for a big star like that, it's a big deal. And that's kind of the idea is that you know that she's supposed to bring these people up to her level, you know, and yeah. that's a sign of value. What do you think? Yeah, I, I like all that right there. Um, I just want to touch on Timeless Tony Storm real quick. I have a coworker. Not not for sports Kita, but I you know I work overnight as well. And um mm -hmm. he tunes in to wrestling every once in a while. He's real casual, but hey, what's the deal with this? Yeah, <laughs> you give me yeah. one of those. <laughs> yeah, give me season. Yeah, he goes, I, I know, I know all the wrestling fans out there who are hardcore wrestling fans. This is the time when somebody in the office is gonna start asking you, is the rock back? <laughs> you uh, like yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, and that's been happening, but uh yeah, timeless Tony Storm. He, he goes, What what's up with the chick who uh comes out? She's got all black and white, you know, when film and it, it looks old school and i go oh, that's that's timeless tony storm he goes man i love what she's doing he goes i tune in week after week now since, since like the last three to four weeks to see want. what she's doing yeah and i was like and that's a casual fan yeah it's like and you know and i i love that character too i think she's full-on kayfabe just you know going all in and, and it's and it's great but yeah mercedes monet and sky blue would be great i know that you know she's sky blue could use a little boost she is a fan favorite but yeah to, to boost her up a little bit more that would be a great start uh keep asking us wrestling questions here i don't i don't mind this here we'll get to this, this is a fun one mm -hmm. is mjf going to wwe oh uh so mjf last wrestled for all elite wrestling at the end of 2023 dropping the title and then reportedly going back on the shelf with a serious shoulder injury and some other issues he was working and wrestling around uh, he ran with the AEW title for quite some time. This is a part of the big devil reveal that Adam Cole was the devil uh, and then launched his own Undisputed Kingdom faction and MJF is gone. Now, MJF became uh, our scumbag, a beloved, uh, somewhat beloved badass baby face who says mean things and is a tweener, right? Uh, and then there was some, you know, the big thing prior to him being uh, a beloved fan favorite there at the end with the title was how he won the title as a villain who loved being hated, who said his contract was up in 2024 and that he would be part of the bidding war of 2024. Well, we're in March of 2024. Yeah. And we haven't heard much about that. I'm of the thought and has been of the thought of many people within wrestling media who talk to people in the know, even though Maxwell Jacob Freeman will protect the secret as much as he possibly can and try and work kayfabe. And he's a very, very staunch report, uh, fan of that. I can tell you from my own personal experience of being around Max that if if he's if he's a goalkeeper of K Fame and, and he likes it and that's the way he likes to do his business and if you get to do business with them that's how you do your business nice. uh, and and I can appreciate that uh, so I'm of the thought I think he's staying I I don't think I don't think he's leaving uh, anytime soon but you had this guy at that wrestling movie premiere for Iron Claw just hey. How you doing, John Cena? How you doing? And yeah. th then everyone got talking about it. And, and you know, you got a lot of talent. It's going to go both ways. And this is a different WWE than even the one he was teasing signing with two years ago, right? True. Very true. Uh, I definitely see him staying with AEW. And I think he's working the angle. I also think he was banged up, right? Right before he mm, took mm -hmm. his little hiatus here. So I, I think it's more of, you know, they're so going to You're not, you're not signing with anyone right away if you're under the knife with a surgery, you know? Right. Some people have, though. <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, you know, Brian, Brian Pillman did that right away back in the nineties yeah. when you were in the thick of like ECW, WCW, WWE, and all of the, uh, uh, Hey, Eric Bischoff, I'm going to leave WCW and go work at WWE, but you want to work with me on it. And there's, there's that, but he had an yeah, injury true. and like all these different things. Right. Yeah. So it's all up in the air. A lot of different stuff happening here. Um, yes, but other people kind of talking about the rock, the rock, He's making people jealous here. 
uh, Lamont think maybe certain talents are jealous of his stardom. Haters. Going to hate. Yes. I agree with that. <laughs> I can see that. I agree, yeah. too. He's also, he's their boss, too. You know, he can kind of do whatever he wants. So. And he yeah. keeps stating that, too. <laughs> uh, Brandon Klinger. Hey, guys. Have you checked out the Dreamware YouTube channel? They are teasing Bo Dallas returning along with others before him. I've heard this, and there is um I, I would say this is more of a snowballed fan creation thing than a legitimate story. And I don't mean that to disparage anyone who's a huge Bray Wyatt fan and loves those characters and that kind of twisted, demented Alice in Wonderland thing within WWE that he was doing, which was very unique and very, very special. And mm -hmm. cinema, people are using that word with a lot of what he was doing. Um, would Bo Dallas be able to continue kind of continue that legacy on he was a part of it uh is it something that fans will buy into the same way they did before that's very hard to pull off um but if they want to try it i'm not opposed to it you know like it, it but wwe's got a thick roster right now where is where is some a story like that is going to need a lot of tv time uh and everything with bray Wyatt when even when he, he only wrestled one match on tv when he when he came back to wwe but did a lot of promos and had a lot of resources tied to what he was doing and a lot of speculation, right? We were all deciphering every video and stuff like that. There's a lot of resources that go into that. Is yeah. that something they're going to do with somebody that isn't Bray Wyatt? And that isn't a shot at Bo Dallas at all. Uh, but it's just the reality. I don't know. You know, is this is this still something that WWE is still... Rob Fee was a big, a big writer and part of the writing with WWE long term. I don't know. Is that something they're still invested in? Plans change. Plans change for WrestleMania. Biggest match of the year. It was completely flipped upside down the last month and a half, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely see Bo Dallas coming back. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to work that whole angle with the with the Bray Six, but um, it, or the Wyatt Six. It would be, I don't, I don't know how they can make that work as well with Bo either. I, I do, I like Bo. I think he's a great wrestler. And I definitely see him getting back into WWE, but I, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure about the Wyatt Six angle. I did love it. I loved it when it was with Bray and all that. It was, you know, very interesting, very intriguing. But I'm not sure they're doing that with Bo. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony, with a question: Do you think New Japan Strong Women's Champion Julia, uh, I hope I'm saying that correctly, will be coming to WWE later this year after helping out Rossi with the new wrestling company in Japan? Um, a lot of weirdness in stardom. So stardom is the women's division, the women's promotion that is now owned in, under the New Japan Pro Wrestling banner. Julia is a big star. She's been open talking in interviews about the idea of going to WWE. Uh, she is somebody who is a big star in New Japan. She's probably one of the more prominent female wrestling stars there. Uh, with and They have a few. They have a lot of Joshi stars that are big stars here. Uh, and there's a lot more uh, of WWE looking at uh, talent out of Asia in general. Mm -hmm. uh, reportedly. So I think it's possible. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as you see with Jay Cargill, WWE is not opposed to getting talent from another promotion. They're not opposed to it anymore, or at least they, they weren't opposed to it years ago, but now they're definitely not opposed to it. But you do have to worry about the contract tampering and stuff like that. What is someone's contract status and those different types of things? So I think it's possible, you know, it's been talked about, but I don't think it's any more possible than it already has been. Uh, Arvin saying Rocky sucks. Rocky <laughs> cry baby with his with Cody Love. Uh, here we go. Why don't you read this one? This is an interesting one. What about Gold Dust back in WWE to help Cody and Seth night one? And if Sly will appear, will Hulkster too? Oh, you know, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, the, the Rock did. I mean, it, it was just a real quick reference, but uh, he he did mention. Uh, his brother, Gold Dust, about being a future Hall of Famer in one of his promos, and uh, which, I, which I thought was very nice. And also, he is, you yeah, know, like, is. Like, like definitely, I was like, yeah. If you follow wrestling for decades, like Gold is absolutely going to the Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. Dustin Rhodes, one hundred percent. Dustin, like, like it's just yeah. a matter of when are you allowed to talk about that? Because he's still under a contract with WWE. Uh, and but also Dustin Rhodes, who's with AEW, uh, yeah, is a veteran wrestler with them. He's more of a producer. Uh, but he's still an active in ring competitor saying this might be the last year he wrestles. Mm -hmm. uh, but he seems very confident and happy and staying in all he wrestling. And he's gotten this great, you know, WWE was going to let him go. They weren't going to let him bring gold dust with him. And he got to go and have one of the best matches of his career. And maybe one of the best brother versus brother matches ever with Cody at that yeah. double or nothing pay-per-view. And they got to do some great, great stuff, but in the most part, he's a supporting role. Uh, and I think he, 
that's a guy he didn't get to do anything with Cody recently, but they got to do one match. They never got to have their brother versus brother match at WrestleMania. They wanted to have it. They had it at double or nothing. I think that business with Cody and, and Dustin is done. Yeah. Uh, but could he come back to WWE and help him with Seth? I don't think it's going to happen this year uh, because of the contract. I don't think all the wrestling is going to let uh, a talent under their watch go and do that. I can tell you there are a lot of people I know in AEW that were shocked that Mercedes Monet, before even debuting with AEW, said, oh, at some point I'll be in WWE again. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so like, uh, that happened last week. And uh, I there were some people I spoke to who are in the know that were like, they were very, very surprised by, by the casual drop of that. Like, it was not, like, stated or hinted or said, oh, you know, anything's a possibility. No, I will at some, yeah, for sure. At yeah, some point I'll be there again. Like that, like, that was said. So, I think with... Gold us, it's a little bit more like, oh, yeah, you would like to see me, Dustin. You'd like to see me come back and put the gold makeup on and do it. Everybody always wants it, but this is an older guy, too. Yeah. You know, and he picks his matches very calculated, but he's working and moving really well. And he's adapted his style. He's never been a body guy where they're wearing all that muscle at a certain age and it breaks down. You know, he's had a, a fair, uh, you know, a fair build his entire career and hides it in the way he presents himself, the way he works, and the things he does. He's very, very smart. Uh, and he's held up and he's stayed sober and been healthier in the past couple yeah. of years. So God bless him for that. I think he deserves a hall. Of, I, I want to see a hall of fame before I want to see him back in the ring with it. This me. But what, what do you think about uh, Sylvester Stallone? That's been talked about. I think he'll do some, if they get him, he'll do some like voiceover or something. He'll like be a part of a video package or something like that. Yeah, I could see that. I, you know, I don't see him coming back for WrestleMania, but how awesome would it be to see Dustin or Gold Dust? And what what was it? The old gold caddy or the cutlass, whatever he drove. <laughs> it was the gold car. And he just comes down the ramp and takes out the bloodline. I don't know. I would love to see it. It's not going to happen, but I would love to see it. Well, Kyrie Sane and EO Sky show up at the Stardom event at Mania 40. I didn't know Stardom had a show, by the way. I got I to gotta look that up. No, they do. No, New Japan has some some stuff. I know they have a lot of talent there in Philadelphia. I forgot about it. I got to talk to Emily May. I'm going to be in trouble now. She's going to yell at me. And Emily May is on, <laughs> on staff with New Japan, so she's going to let yeah. me know about it. Uh, well, Kyrie Sane and EO Sky show up at the Stardom event to open the door. Well, it's op- I, like the door is kind of swinging right now. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, and it depends on who you are. Uh, I don't think you're like I said. I don't think you're going to get this with like uh, a Becky Lynch. You know, I don't. I don't think it's going to happen with them. I don't think it's going to happen with a Cody. But the names you just brought up there, they could do possibility. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, it, a year ago I'd say like absolutely not. Now, yes, yes, yeah, it's pretty cool. Absolutely, crazy times, crazy times, crazy times, crazy times. Uh, this one here from Gypsy Soul Productions. The Brahma Bull needs a rattlesnake stunner. Ha <laughs> ha. One more stunner. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> hope you had yourself a good 316 day there. <laughs> or I hope, hope your St. Patrick's Day was really good. 316. Oh, hell yeah. Drink a beer. I'm not going to do that. I want to get stuff all over my computer. <laughs> if I had a few, I, I, I wouldn't oh, do you, it either. You've had a few already? <laughs> no, it, it, I had a few. I had a few. Did you already have a few week, before, before today? Over the weekend. <laughs> over the weekend, maybe. <laughs> oh, man. All Thanks, right. Th- thank you guys so much for checking out the show. Hope you guys had a good time. And do we have uh, people saying there's a rumor damage controls to Kurikai Asuka Kyrie Singh will be going against Bianca Belair, Naomi, and Jay Cargo in a six women tag match at WrestleMania? That, who knows with Asuka because it's injury. Yeah. Uh, but that's a way to get a lot of women on the card. I think mm-hmm. I think the next few wrestling matches you're going to see that are added and, and done on WrestleMania. I was wrapping up the show there. Um, that you're going to see added to WrestleMania are going to be just that. Just going to yeah. be big multi-person matches and stuff like that. You got, I think your big singles matches are defined. You got Sami Zayn. You got AJ Styles. You got LA Knight together. You have a triple threat that Kevin Owens and Logan Paul. That's a triple threat. So they, that's three big names being added to one match. So you can make sure they're on the card. Um, I think another big women's singles match could maybe get in there if you really want to go for it. Uh, but Bianca Belair has been a big part of WrestleMania every year, and she doesn't have a match yet this year. So I think you got to find out definitely, definitely for Bianca. Uh, if she's healthy, you got to find out how you get her on the card this year and, and make her a part of that. Maybe even keep that modern streak going, huh? Uh, Nick, if they want to follow you, where do they go, bud? You can find me on Twitter or the X and Instagram at Nick underscore Harkson. That's N I C K underscore H A R K S E N. Yes, you can follow me at Kev Kellum six on the Instagram. I have a lot of comedy clips up there. 
Busy as well with the Roast Battle Chicago Tournament. We're now in the semifinals. Nice. So you can subscribe to our Patreon. We have a whole bunch of different content there. Uh, filmed at Zany's, the world famous Zany's Comedy Club here in Chicago. Uh, I'm going to be at WrestleMania week. Uh, on the 3rd of April, I will be performing at the Punchline Comedy Club during WrestleMania week at Punchline Comedy Club right around the corner from Fillmore. Uh, and you can catch me on the 7.30 p.m. show there, the Comedy the comedy All-Star Showcase, if you're buying tickets. If you guys want to go to any of these shows, reach out to me. Maybe, maybe I have comp tickets. I don't know if I do. Uh, and then on the 4th of April, I will be at the Helium Comedy Club, also in Philadelphia, performing on the Nightcap Show, late night show at 10 p.m. At WrestleMania, if you're going to be at WrestleMania, I want to talk to all the people. Uh, if you haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe to Sports Key to Wrestling here on YouTube. A lot of content. A lot, a lot, a lot of content. You want to bank up videos? You do the Q thing on videos? I love doing this. Yeah. I do the Q. I just <laughs> set up like, I'm like and it's, just, it's just playing as I'm just goes. recording voiceovers. Go put our stuff on. We have a lot of videos you haven't watched yet that are in the back catalog to check out. If you just like, I need a wrestling itch. I've already listened to all my podcasts. We got something for you. Go check it out. Thank you guys so much. So much coming to the channel here in the next couple of weeks. Big, big WWE interviews coming here in the next five or six days too, by the way. So look out for those. And remember, when watching wrestling, do don't swear. You, the Rock can swear, but you can't swear. That's true. All right. Don't don't you, you can swear. You hear me, Nick? Don't swear. What do you do though with wrestling? What do you do? You.